Welcome back to the series on searching and sorting. In this part, we'll bring everything that we've covered so far together to demonstrate how searching and sorting functions work in C. As previously covered, to make a generic searching or sorting function, we need to pass in a comparator function. Function pointers allow us to do this. In addition, the array to be searched or sorted would also have to be generic. To demonstrate this idea, let's implement a generic linear search function. Here's our linear search, pointer linear search, and binary search from before. Let me make a new version of linear search. It's no longer going to take an array of integers because we want to make it generic. However, it's no longer going to be able to use that equals equals operator because they're not necessarily integers anymore. So we're going to have to change it so that it takes a comparator instead. We're going to have to change several things here. First of all, it's no longer going to take an integer array. Instead, it takes a void array. A void pointer can point to any type of variable, integers, doubles, or anything else like that. In addition, our key is going to have to be generic. We'll still need n to determine how many elements are in the actual array. But in addition to that, we need yet another parameter, how many bytes each element takes. So we're going to have to pass that in as well. Finally, we need to pass in a comparator. We still have the same basic for loop, but we're no longer comparing integers, so we can't use the equals equals sign anymore. Instead, we need to call that comparator on the key, k, and the individual element in the array, the ith element in the array. We'll come back to how to do that in a second. If they're equal, the comparator will return zero in which case we've found a match and we'll return i, the index at which we found it. Now the comparator requires that we pass in two const void pointers. The key k is already a const void pointer, so we simply pass it in. But how do we pass in the ith element? For this, we need to do a little bit of pointer arithmetic. Normally, we would do something like the following. ARR sub i gives us the ith value, but we would need to change it into a pointer in order to pass it in. This isn't going to work. When we index something, generally the compiler knows how large they are. If we index an array of doubles, it knows that each double is located in 8-byte increments. So giving the 10th element at index 9 means that it would have to offset 9 times 8 or 72 bytes away from the beginning of the array. Since these are void elements, we have to do the arithmetic ourselves. We need to pass in a memory address. The array starts at ARR. We need to go over so many bytes to get the ith element. i times our size parameter gives us that. If this is a character array, then size will be 1, because each character requires 1 byte. So it would be straightforward, 1 byte, 2 bytes, 3 bytes, etc., offset from the beginning of the array. But if this is a bunch of integers, then each one would be 4 bytes. So we would jump over from the 0th byte to 4 bytes to 8 bytes to 12 bytes, etc., Here I've got an integer array. I'll call my generic linear search function, but I need to pass in the appropriate elements. I'll pass in ARR and the size of the array. There are eight elements in there, but each element is an integer. The number of bytes that each integer takes can be found using the size of macro, just like we did with malloc. 
our key that we're searching for is 10, the last element. I could pass this in directly, but that would be passing it in by value, meaning that the value 10 would be used as a memory address, and that probably doesn't belong to us, so it'd be a segmentation fault. I need to pass in the memory address of k. And finally, we need an integer comparator. We wrote one before. I'll bring it in as you, and use it as part of this demo. Now to pass in that comparator, I simply pass in the function name. This generic linear search function doesn't have any idea what's stored in the array, what type its key is, or what the comparator is actually doing. And it doesn't need to know any of that stuff. It only needs to know how to access its elements and pass them on to the comparator. When it hits zero, it knows that it's found the element and returns the index. Let's run it. It found 10 at index seven, the last index. Now to demonstrate the true power of this, let's create another array of different elements. Here I've got an array of six double elements. I'm using the exact same generic linear search function to search through this array of different elements. I pass in foo, and there are six elements in this array. And each one is a double, so it takes size of double bytes each. Pass in the key. And now we'll need a different comparator. This comparator is for integers only. we should find it at index zero. Even unsuccessful searches will work. This is the true power of generic programming writing one solution that will work on any type. All you need to do is write a comparator for that particular type and your particular search criteria. So in practice, we don't write our own searching and sorting functions. C already provides both in the standard library. In particular, it provides QSort, a generic sorting algorithm. As the name implies, historically, it's been an implementation of QuickSort. It's not necessarily the case that it has to be an implementation of QuickSort. QSort takes four arguments. The first argument is the array of elements that you want sorted. It's passed by reference like other arrays, but it's a generic void pointer so that it can be applied to any type of data. NEL is short for the number of elements in the array. Like all of our array functions, we have to communicate to the function how big the array is. The third argument is the size of each element. When QSort swaps two elements, it needs to know how many bytes that it actually needs to swap. If it's sorting an array of integers, it'll have to swap four bytes. If it's an array of doubles, it'll have to swap eight, etc. Again, typically you use the size of macro for this argument. Finally, the last argument is the comparator function that you want QSort to order the elements by. Let's take a look at a quick demonstration. Here's that searching and sorting demo from a previous part. I've created four students here so that we can have a test array to work with. I'll use this function to print out the roster, which is in the following order, Burke, Borg, Lovelace, and Turing. Let's go ahead and call QSort to sort them by our names. 
First we pass in the array. Then we pass in the number of elements. In this case, I've got a variable to hold that n. Now, how big is each element? Each element is a student, so I'll use size of student to determine how many bytes each record takes. Finally, I pass in the comparator that I want to use. If I want to do it by name, I'll use the CMP student by name comparator that we developed before. To make sure it works, let's print them out again. Here's the original ordering, Burke, Borg, Lovelace, Turing, which is not in order. Once it's sorted, we've got Borg, Burke, Lovelace, and Turing, which is in order. To demonstrate how we might sort it in a different order, let's go ahead and sort it by NUID. The only difference is the comparator that we use. And now they're ordered by NUID in lexicographic order. One last example, let's order them by GPA. And now they're ordered by GPA in descending order, just like we designed our comparator to do. C provides several search functions as well. There are a couple of linear search functions already built in, but I'll let you RTM to find out about those. The most important one is C's implementation of binary search, called bSearch. The arguments are virtually the same as QSort, except for the first one, which is a pointer to a generic key element, similar to our generic linear search implementation. bSearch returns a pointer to the element that matches the key. Here, matching means an element such that the comparator returns zero. In the event of an unsuccessful search, bSearch will return null as a flag value to indicate that. It's important to note that bSearch expects the array to be sorted using the same comparator you use to search it. Otherwise, the results may not be correct. Let's take a look at a demonstration again. To start, I'll need to create a dummy key variable. All this is doing is special syntax to create a student structure whose NUID is given with dummy default values for the rest of the elements. Now let's search for Anita Borg by NUID. To do this, we need to ensure that the array is sorted by NUID, otherwise B search will not work. The first thing we do is pass in a pointer to the key. Key is just a regular old student structure. So to get its memory address, we use the ampersand. Then the rest of the arguments are exactly the same as in QSort. We pass, in the, we pass in the array, the number of elements in the array, how big each element is in bytes, and the comparator that we want to use to search for a match. and we found her. Now to demonstrate how it could fail, let's use the GPA comparator, but search on the NUID comparator. B search returned null, indicating a failure to find anyone with an NUID of 33837112. But of course we know that that's not true. The array was sorted by GPA meaning that when B search looked at the middle element, it started searching in the wrong half of the array. It was sorted along a different criteria. If you're going to use B search, you need to use the exact same comparator that you use to sort it. Again, in practice, you don't roll your own searching and sorting algorithms. You use what's built into the language, framework, or a standard library. The built-in functions are going to be well-tested, general, 
and really efficient.